The last talk uh, in this session will be by Deborah Pretzi, and the title of her talk is Light Emission from Ultra Narrow Graphene Nano Ribbons, Edge and Termini Effects. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming. Uh, and uh, today I will uh, present our work on the uh, first principle simulation of the optical properties of uh, finite graphene nanoribbon, which was done in collaboration with an experimental group uh, from uh, CNRS at Strasbourg uh, within the MAX project. Um, so as you, as many of you know, uh, actually, uh, nanostructure is, na nanostructuring is one of the best strategies to uh, obtain, to, to uh, open a gap into graphene and make it suitable for, uh, opt for standard optoelectronic application. And this can be done either by cutting graphene into one-dimensional stripes or, to, or by confining electrons into zero-dimensional quantum dots or uh, molecules, if you prefer. Um, but as uh, um, uh, theoretical prediction have uh, uh, told us, uh, actually the quantum confinement is not the only knob that we can tune to uh, modify the properties, the, the gap and the optical properties of this type of materials. Uh, in particular, besides uh, changing the width of the ribbon, uh, you can also play with other, uh, with other properties. Uh, in particular, you can change the cutting direction, so either if you have, or the so-called chirality, so if you have uh, zigzag or armchair ribbons, you can have very different properties. Uh, and, but also changing the very local conformation of the edges. Uh, or adding some functional group to the edge might lead to very different properties. Here is a very simple example uh, from a work of the group of Francesco Mauri, uh, and they show that if you um, just passivate your system uh, with, uh, um, in, in a different way, you can get very different band structures. Um, in order to exploit all this richness in terms of gap tunability, which is probably uh, the uh, most important uh, um, peculiarity of this type of system, uh, it is really crucial uh, to, to get to the nanometer scale in terms of lateral confinement and above all to reach the full edge control. Uh, so uh, during the last decade, uh, we have had an intense effort to achieve both of these, uh, um, uh, say, both of these uh, uh, properties. And uh, uh, the most successful strategy today is based on bottom-up approaches, where the focus is basically on the design of uh, uh, proper uh, molecular precursors that allow to build ribbons which have a specific width and a specific edge morphology. Uh, and uh, actually chemists worked a lot on these, uh, on these strategies and we now have a very rich library of ribbons with uh, different width, different properties. Uh, um, so starting from that, uh, in order to go, uh, I mean, in the direction of optoelectronic devices, they started to characterize the optical properties of these systems in different manners. Um, first of all, the properties were probed both on substrate uh, and in solution. Uh, there has been one of the main achievements was to achieve the role of quasi-particle and multi-particle excitation uh, in this type of system due to the quantum, which are expected to be uh, large in, in view of uh, quantum confinement. And this was assessed actually both uh, 
uh, I mean, combining both theor uh, ab initio theoretical modeling and experiments. All of this was done basically regarding uh, optical absorption. But if you want to go into the direction of devices, one of the most important features is also emission. So what about emission? Actually, there are few reports about emission of these systems and uh, uh, with very erratic features. So, uh, for instance, these uh, uh, seven armchair graphene nanoribbons, which was the first one synthesized in 2010, uh, showed very weak, very poor uh, emission properties. So the, the, the emission spectrum, the PL spectrum, which is this one, is weak and featureless. And you can only retrieve some luminescence uh, if you either, uh, um, I mean, expose your system to uh, blue laser uh, for a certain time, and so you can you can get some sort of emission. This is PL spectrum, uh, or if you hydrogenate your system. So all the emission that is observed is related to defect, defect of the SP2, uh, uh, con I mean the SP2 nature, network. Uh, so there was another report uh, which we uh, actually knew about um, through a private communication, uh, which was uh, um, PL induced. Uh, um, from STM. Actually, the same ribbon was grown on gold and then it was lifted with the STM tip in order to decouple it from the substrate. Um, and they, they actually um, could observe sometimes some featureless, very weak spectrums and sometimes very broad and very bright, I mean, very bright and very strong emission. Uh, so again, uh, also in this case, the, the emission feature were rather erratic. Um, but actually, this second experiment has very, has some uh, very, um, relevant properties, some very relevant feature that uh, uh, I want to underline. First of all, this STM-induced light emission, this type of experiments, allows to measure single ribbons. And the second thing is that uh, these are the plus of this type of experiment is that uh, you can exploit the uh, capability of STM to manipulate the structure and to image before and after the experiment. So uh, actually, I, I think that this type of experiments in this, in this field was very valuable. Um, and here is where the collaboration came because they wanted to better understand the origin of this light emission. So let me say some other words about uh, the experiment. Uh, what they understood, uh, making the experiment cleaner and cleaner, was that uh, uh, all this story had to do with the termini of the ribbon. Uh, so if they make the ribbon, they, they synthesize the ribbon and they gently lift it up, uh, the ribbon has this type of termini with three hydrogen terminating the zigzag termini. Uh, and what they see is this spectrum here in the bottom, which is broad, featureless, and it very much resembles the spectrum that you have when you do not have any ribbon in the junction. So. Uh, it can be related to a sort of plasmonic emission. Uh, but if you remove on purpose with the tip uh, the central hydrogen atom, so you have a C-terminated uh, 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 benzene ring here, and then you lift it with your tip, what you see is this spectrum in the, in the top uh, where you have a bright feature uh, which, is, uh, which appears at about 1.6 EV, plus a couple of redshifted vibronic replicas. Um, 
And if you extrapolate uh, uh, the, 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 the energy position of this peak to zero bias, what you get is uh, a peak at about 1.15 EV. So this is much lower than the optical gap of the ribbon, uh, either measured by RDS or resonant Raman, or what, what you can get from theoretical simulation. Uh, so this clearly, this clearly points to the fact that the photoluminescence emission um, is activated by some coupling from the tip and the ribbon terminus. Uh, if we, you want to have some insight from ab initio simulation then, you have to capture the key feature of your system uh, because of course you cannot describe uh, your 20 nanometer long ribbon with the, 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 the um, micrometer size tip, but there are a number of features that has to be there in your simulation. First of all, ribbon has to be finite. Secondly, you have to consider the contact with the tip. And third of all, you have to include uh, at some point, medibody effect, because these were uh, demonstrated to be crucial in order to describe the optical properties. Uh, so the first part was done uh, within a density functional theory framework by using the quantum espresso package, and the second part uh, uh, was uh, uh, was uh, included uh, within the GW beta salpeter approach by using the Yambo code. Uh, so. What is special, what, you, what we know that is special from a finite ribbon? Uh, we learn actually from, uh, from the AIMPA group uh, that uh, if uh, you consider your, your finite ribbon and you probe the termini of your ribbon, uh, what you see is that you have a large gap which is uh, uh, the one related to the uh, bulk states, but you also see states in this gap which are related to time-like states localized at the zigzag termini. And uh, uh, if you do the calculation for that, uh, you exactly obtain the same feature, and, uh, uh, and these states uh, can be understood uh, uh, I mean, considering uh, fully spin polarized calculation with antiferromagnetic order. So, what do we have to do for that? First of all, what we want to do is to focus on one of the two termini. We want to totally avoid any edge edge, uh, any, termini, term, any termini interaction. So, uh, what we did was to make the, the finite ribbon asymmetric. And this allows us to remove two of the states. So we are, we, we are only left with two of them. And as you can see, uh, the, um, uh, the, the PDOS here, um, if you either uh, include or not the spin polarization, the only region which is changing is this one in the middle. So bulk states are not at all uh, um, spin polarized, the only states which are spin polarized are the one in the gap. And uh, uh, which, and if you do not consider spin polarization, basically uh, they are degenerate and lie at the Fermi level. Uh, so we, next thing to do is to consider the effect of the gold cluster uh, or, or the gold contact, say, uh, with the tip. And uh, to do this, we consider the uh, a tri uh, tetragonal gold cluster, which could mimic the tip. Uh, and here is the PDOS, where the, um, the gray line is the contribution on carbon, while the um, orange line is the contribution on gold. And uh, what you can see from there is basically that the presence of gold makes the system paramagnetic. So if you compare the gray line here with the, um, with the blue line there, what you see is that uh, the system is paramagnetic 
and uh, the, these two uh, uh, termini states, so these two time states, lie at the Fermi level. Um, so we uh, actually, in addition to learning, which is the effect of uh, uh, the, the contact with the tip, we also learn something else that basically in order to uh, study the optical properties what we could do is to uh, avoid including the tip, which is a mess, <laughs> and to consider the system isolated but starting from the spin unpolarized ground state. So we did so, we started from this, uh, uh, from basically from this solution, uh, DFT solution for the isolated system, and we included many body effect uh, in order to describe the optical properties of this system. Um, these are actually the results. Uh, this is the energy level. Uh, and these are the uh, consham orbitals for the uh, levels closest to the Fermi level. Uh, and, here, and here is the spectrum. What, you, what we observed is that in addition to states that are related to bulk-bulk transition, so transition from uh, bulk states in the uh, valence to the conduction, this one, which are transition of this type uh, that I indicated with EAA, uh, that are also additional excitation, which um, actually involve transition between uh, bulk states and the localized ones. So you involve transition between this type of states and states localized at the termini. And these are uh, these excitation A and B that uh, I highlighted there. Uh, so second thing to notice is that, of course, we need to uh, go to finite length system to see this type of effects, uh, but we cannot reach the limit where uh, we uh, would retrieve for uh, the bulk excitation uh, the behavior of the infinite system. So uh, we consider the number of them uh, of increasing length, uh, and here are the results for, uh, for uh, a number of calculations the DFT gap, the GW gap, and the uh, main transition related to bulk states. Um, as you see, we are very far, even in the largest, we have uh, um, a peak at 2.6, which is very far from the 2 EV uh, peak uh, that we find in absorption. But we can extrapolate, of course, and uh, what we get is exactly that. W what we get for the bulk excitation is exactly a 1.9 EV uh, um, limit, uh, which is uh, in very good agreement uh, with the calculation for infinite systems. Uh, and if you do the same for, uh, for the other type of uh, excitation, and in particular for the lowest energy excitation, you get something which is of the order of 1.1, so in very good agreement with the experimental peaks ob observed in uh, uh, STM light-induced emission experiments. So seems that, it seems that we have understood the origin of the emission. So it seems that from, from our calculation that the emission comes from uh, excitation which involve uh, bulk and uh, uh, termini localized uh, states. Uh, the third observation uh, I want to uh, underline is that uh, uh, below the bulk uh, uh, excitation uh, there are a number of uh, um, states, uh, a huge number of, of states with very low oscillator strength. And all of them actually uh, would have lower and lower uh, oscillator strength as soon as you increase the length of your ribbon. So, uh, 
these are expected to, the, the oscillator strength of these states is expected to decrease because the overlap is uh, becoming mm, smaller and smaller as soon as you uh, make uh, the, the ribbon longer. Um, so we point to this uh, uh, as one of the reasons why in uh, ensemble measurements on insulator, uh, you do uh, see very weak and featureless uh, uh, emission. So basically the reason why the emission is very poor is related to uh, the fact that uh, this system are intrinsically finite even uh, if you make it longer and longer. So there are states which are there and, uh, and basically uh, kill your emission. Uh, so here I come to my conclusion. Uh, we have characterized the electronic and optical properties of uh, uh, graphene nanoribbons and we have seen that they are governed by electron-electron interaction. So we need to resort to uh, scheme beyond DFT in order to uh, give uh, an accurate description of uh, electronic and optical properties and above all to compare with spectroscopies. Um, in addition to this, uh, other effects, I mean, considering effects which go beyond uh, the uh, the simple approximation of infinite system uh, I mean, appears to be very important. So finite size, uh, coupling with uh, uh, the tip, all of this becomes very important. Um, this, this actually appeared uh, recently in a, in a nano letters paper that I uh, put here. Uh, but more than that, I want to thank all the people that work uh, to this uh, to this project, uh, my co-workers at uh, uh, CNR Nano in Modena, Claudia Cardoso, who uh, is now at the International Nanotechnology Lab uh, in Braga, and Andrea Ferretti and the experimental collaborators uh, uh, from uh, CNRS in Strasbourg, which are Michael Chong, who did the measurements, and Guillaume Schul. And you for your attention. Thanks.